how to program. One of these days, a few of them will make the change using Freedom 1, and then they will publish their modified version, which is exercising Freedom 3. And then all those million people can switch to that version and get the change they wanted. They don't know how to program, but they still indirectly get the benefit of freedoms one and three. So, every user can directly exercise freedom zero, the freedom to run the program as you wish, and freedom two, the freedom to make copies and distribute them when you wish. Only programmers can directly exercise freedoms one and three, because that involves programming. But once they do, everybody gets the benefit. So all four freedoms are essential to everyone, directly or indirectly. So I think I will start again because uh, it's a long talk. So what if there are just a thousand people who want a certain change in a free program? And suppose none of them knows how to program they can still get the benefit of the four freedoms. Here's how they do it. One of them posts an announcement saying, I, would, I wish someone would make this change. Is there anyone else who also wants it? And the other thousand people will write back saying, I want it. And then they can start an organization. The idea of the organization is that they all become members and they all pay dues. And the organization uses that money to pay someone to make the change. So for instance, suppose it's a fairly big change. The organization might charge 100 euro. And then if a thousand people join, it will have 100,000 euro. Well, that's enough to pay two programmers to work for a year so they could make a pretty big change. If it's a smaller change, they might just want 10 euro from each member. In order to spend the money, they have to choose programmers to hire. So they can talk to some programmers and say, when could you make this change and what would you charge? And then they can ask some other programmers, when would, could you make this change and what would you charge? 
and then eventually they'll choose who to hire. And this illustrates that free software means there's a free market for support of all kinds. Support for proprietary software is usually a monopoly because only the developer has the source code. So only the developer can change anything. If the user wants a change and the developer doesn't do it, the user has to beg. Please, oh developer, make this change for me. Sometimes the developer says, pay us and we'll listen to your problem. And if the user does that, the developer says, thank you. In six months there will be an upgrade. Buy the upgrade and you'll see if we fixed your problem and you'll see what new problems we have in store for you. <laughs> but with free software, anyone who has a copy can study the source code, master it, and begin offering support. So we have a free market for support. And therefore, those organizations that really value good support and are willing to pay for it because you're always going to have to pay for good support unless the public really loves you, they can generally get better support through the free market for f support for free software. That is better support for their money because they're not stuck with one monopoly for support. Now this brings us to a paradox. Usually when there's a choice between products to do a job, we say that that's, there's no monopoly. But when there's a choice between proprietary software packages, yes, there is monopoly. There's more than one monopoly. If the poor user chooses this program, then he's stuck with this monopoly for support. But if the poor user chooses this program, he's stuck with this monopoly for support. So it's a choice between monopolies. There's no way to escape from monopoly, except free software. It's the only way to escape from monopoly. And this illustrates a broader principle. Freedom is something much bigger than the freedom to, than having a choice between a few fixed options. So, because freedom means having control of your own life. So when people try to analyze the meaning of freedom by equating it to the freedom of choice, they've already thrown away most of what freedom means. They're keeping just a little piece of it. So their analysis will tend to show that freedom is a pretty unimportant small thing because they've thrown away most of it. Be on the lookout for that error. Having a choice between proprietary programs means being able to choose your master. Freedom is not having a master. So I've explained the reasons for the four essential freedoms, why each of these freedoms is essential. If a program gives you all four of these freedoms, then it's free software. That means it is being distributed to the public in a system that is ethical, that respects people's freedom and respects social solidarity. If one of these freedoms is missing, then the system of distribution of the program is antisocial, and it shouldn't be distributed that way. The development of a proprietary program is not a contribution to society, it's an attack. So I reached the conclusion in 1983 that I wanted to use software in freedom. 